The Forest. This breathtaking game pushes the boundaries of gaming by daring to ask the question, what if survival games actually get finished? A lot of people are starting to play Sons of the Forest lately, and with it still being on early access, I thought what better way to celebrate this momentous occasion than by replaying the first game and making a proper, complete, newbie-friendly beginner's guide for The Forest. God knows I want to make one for the sequel, but it got delayed so many times, I'm just happy it's out. Come and everyone, I'm Ali Menopi, and today, we're going to survive the forest. I'm gonna play Sons of the Forest eventually. Let's separate each section of the game into seven parts. I decided to do it this way as it won't be as confusing. Also, I like to categorize things. These are the first seven days, character needs, resource gathering, crafting, base building, combat, and exploration. And as usual, I'll be ending it with all the tips and tricks I've learned, gathered, thought of, and found online. The Forest is one of those games that if you want to be immersed, have fun with your friends, or spend hours just by building huge ass or complicated bases, this would be it. The problem is that with that much freedom, you don't really know where to start. So with that, let's start with the first seven days. Well, that's not good. This game is not as complicated as you think it is. At least not as complex as other games within its genre. It's not as complicated as Don't Starve, and you're not gonna die as much as Green Hell. You go out, explore, craft, build, hunt, and fight. Survival. In the first seven days, what you really should focus on would be setting up your first base. It could be your last base if you wanted to, but know that in the succeeding days, more and more cannibals will try to visit your base. The more active you are, the more enemies you fight, and the longer the in-game clock goes on. That's not to say you should finish the game as quickly as possible, as this game has one of the best ambience out of all other games I've ever played. And god damn is it good! Oh, they can dodge? They can do that? Where's he going? <laughs> While you're allowed. Oh my god. Build a hunter's shelter. This is where you'll sleep and save. This is very important as not saving is bad. Second, build a spear. This will be your main weapon in the first few days up until you upgrade it or find something better. The plain axe at the beginning of the game does count as a weapon, but it's not as good in terms of raw damage output. Also, you can throw a spear. Grab all of the supplies found in and around the plane, such as food and luggage. Within them are snacks, sodas, cloth, and medicine. This is a survival game. You need as many supplies as you can get. The forest whole thick is its base building mechanics and how you can survive whilst you build them. To be honest, you don't really need that big of a base if you want to survive, but building one does make it far more fun and much more action. It's one of the best things about the game, so unless you're planning on building right next to the plane, I suggest moving away from that location as in the next few minutes, cannibal patrols will start investigating that area every now and then. If you want some action, cool. If not, maybe don't stay there. Okay, maybe opening that was a bad idea. Am I even doing damage? That is pretty easy. Nope! Never mind. Fuck you. Other things to consider would be building up defensive walls, a drying rack for meat, a bonfire to cook food on, and a pair of rainwater collectors. You can drink from lakes, but they will damage you if you don't boil the water first. A good place to set up your first base is where a fish pond is nearby. Near the ocean is nice, maybe next to a cliff, really any location will do. As long as you have plenty of resources near the area, preferably sticks and logs. And I just want to say this right off the bat, there's no such thing as the best base location. Trust me on this, it doesn't exist. Oh, that rhymed. Yes, I can show you the whole map, what it looks like, where everything is, the cannibal patrols, the safest areas, but that'll defeat the purpose of the game, which is survival through smarts and exploration. So build where you want to build and do your best to defend it. 
these are all the character stats present in the forest. I categorize these stats into five groups. Self-explanatory ones are your health, stamina, energy, and different types of armors. Survival stats are concerned with your overall survival and the not dying part requirements of the game. Attributes revolve around specific abilities that your character can and cannot do. The hard boys are stats that only really matter on harder difficulties, and I named these ones as the I'm feeling this, which includes all specific situations your character can go through like that, which the fandom geniusly wrote as that occurs when you die. I mean, they're right. Health determines how much damage you can take. Stamina determines how many actions you can take. Energy determines how many actions you can take within a set period of time. This will determine how far your stamina will regenerate upon rest. The more energy you have, the more stamina you'll get and the more actions you can take. I really hope you got that. Armor works as an additional health pool when worn. There are a lot of different types of armors in the game, and for the sake of keeping this as spoiler-free as possible, unfortunately, or rather fortunately, I'm not gonna discuss that here. Cold armor specifically protects you from cold damage, as temperature determines how much cold your character can handle before acquiring the cold state. Players can become cold when entering a snowy biome, entering freezing cold weather, getting out of frigid water, or getting wet at night. Next are survival stats. These are all pretty basic and not something you can't find in other games. These are fullness, hydration, stealth, and breath. Fullness revolve around your hunger and how much you need to eat to be full. Hydration revolve around your thirst and how much you need to drink to be hydrated. Stealth is concerned on how hidden your character is and breath is how long you can hold your breath. I don't know how else I can explain that. It's all pretty basic and that's because, and I've played a lot of survival games, I can comfortably say that out of all of them, this one is definitely the most beginner friendly. Able to bring you into the genre easily while at the same time be immersed and incredibly horrified. Survival is simple, interactive, and it's really difficult to die from hunger in this game. Not unlike Don't Starve Together, where it tricks you with its cutesy 2D art style only for it to absolutely destroy you in the first 7 days. If you want me to cover Don't Starve Together, leave it in the comment section below. Moving into attributes, I suggest not going over these too much as I managed to beat the game completely without even understanding what any of these does. I do now, but that just goes to show how friendly to newcomers this game truly is. Let's move on. Athleticism influences stamina, breath, and movement speed. Strength affects the damage you do with all melee weapons. Sanity determines how sane or insane your character can be, and I'm telling you this right now, there's no negative impact in having low sanity. At all. In the game, I feel like I should clarify that. Two stats are added into the game if you play the game on max difficulty of hard survival. These are calories and weight. And I'm sad to say that the forest doesn't really do difficulty particularly well. All it does is make the game take a little longer to beat and a hell of a lot more tedious. Don't get me wrong, I like the challenge, but this makes enemies far more tanky, do more damage, and again, and I just want to stress this, it takes way too long to bring a single enemy down. And it's just not worth it. I get it. It's difficult, it's challenging, and that's what you want, but the game just doesn't give you enough incentive to actually go on fights. So, yeah, you actually lose more resources if you do, which is not good. Other than that, there's these ones, yada yada yada. Overall, just have fun. It's not that complicated of a game, and it's gonna give you and your friends a lot of memorable moments, if you go at it blind. Hence why this is spoiler free. Well, that's gonna take a while. As this is a survival game, you'll be gathering a lot of resources. A lot of resources. And with that, you'll be able to craft and build just about anything that the game allows you to do. Most of what you'll need are logs, leaves, rocks, and by god, sticks. So many sticks. Out of all the things you'll build, almost everything and anything will require sticks. From furniture, to shelters, to even decorations. Logs can be acquired by chopping trees, and if you needed me to tell you that, I'm sorry you had to find out this way. Don't worry too much where you hit the tree, it doesn't matter, and it'll always land where you face at the end. You can do it that way, or you can do it the American way, which is, well, this.
<laughs> yeah, that works. There are two components for survival. That's food and water. You need both to survive. Water can be taken from water collectors and ponds, and food can be found from any meat you can find. Usually, animal meat. The longer the game goes on, the bigger your beast becomes, and the further and further you're gonna have to go to get materials. Long sleds can help with this so that you can transport multiple objects at once. Although, don't mistake them for the name, as you can use them to transport other materials as well. Maybe even dead bodies. Okay, maybe not dead bodies. You can also use zip lines, which are fun, but they only carry logs. I wish you can use it on sticks, but it doesn't, so... Hmm. Sticks can be grabbed by hitting them, rocks respawn on the ground, cloth can be found inside luggage, and rope can be crafted with cloth. And you passively gain leaves just by playing the game alone. That's a lot of information just from resource gathering, and I really don't want to tell you too much as survival games are best played with you learning this stuff by yourself. My only advice is, try to upgrade your storage as soon as possible, because you'll be needing them. Ah, uh, crafting. There seems to be this confusion on how crafting works, and I completely understand. Mostly because the game doesn't even tell you how to do it. You know how long it took me to figure out that you can make a torch with your axe? You know how many times that could have been useful? So... So many times! Here's how you craft. If you open up your inventory, you'll be able to see every single item you have on you. From sticks, to weapons, to even cannibal parts. Right click on an item and that'll bring that item to the center of the screen. You have now selected that item as one of the components of which you're about to craft. In this case, I selected a stick. Now, in the middle of the screen, you'll be able to see a translucent gear icon where if you hover over it, you'll see a complete list of everything you can craft with that stick as one of your components. In this case, if I wanted to build a bow, I can follow what's written on the item selection, which is one stick, one cloth, and one rope. Right click on that gear icon again, and there you go. You have now created a crafted bow. Now, obviously, you will still need arrows for this, but this time you won't need to keep checking the internet on how each item can be crafted and what materials you will need. Just pick one object from your inventory and there they are. You know exactly what you need. Now, where you'll get them is a different matter entirely, but everything and anything found on that list can be crafted as long as you have the right materials. And if you watched a YouTube video where somebody's using some sort of special weapon, albeit a sword or a bow, Chances are, they found it, rather than crafted it. I'd be very impressed if you managed to craft a gun in this game. Ooh, too close. Wow, that's loud. Oh, he's running. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You better run. What are you doing? For base building, it's quite different. Instead of opening up your inventory, you're gonna have to open up your survival guide instead. Within this book, you'll get a list of structures you can build and place. This spreads out into multiple tabs, including far sources, storages, buildings, defenses, and even this. Feel free to build your base however you wish. The base building mechanic in this game is one of the best ones out there. Well, compared to other survival games. And it really challenges you to build whatever your mind can think of, except for a few limitations. With that said, base building in this game is so much fun that I believe it's best experience on its own and that I really should not spoil too much here, nor am I gonna give out too much information. You'll see it for what it is, experience it for what it is, learn as you go, and you will encounter a lot of fun and happy discoveries. I know this is a beginner's guide and I really should be teaching you more things, but trust me, You'll appreciate base building more if you knew less. Combat in the forest is probably one of the more simpler aspects of the game in comparison to its crafting and building portions. If it's a melee weapon, you swing all about, and if it's a ranged weapon, you aim and shoot. And that's it. 
There's a lot of weapons present in the game ranging to katanas, to tennis rackets, to bows, to slingshots, to even catapults if you also choose to build one. There's a stamina system in this game as I've said and you'd want to time your dodges and attacks properly to make sure you don't overdo things or else you're gonna get tired and quickly surrounded. Enemies usually attack one by one, sometimes all at the same time, but usually you can easily dodge their attacks even if you get surrounded by three or even four cannibals. This is because for some reason they will always try to do this charging attack if you get far enough. They charge, you sidestep, and then you attack as you wish. It's not that complicated. You can even shoot at them as they run towards you. Just make sure you have enough arrows and that you're checking your stamina as you do it. You don't want to run out of that as you're fighting enemies. In the 30 or so in-game days that I've played this game, and I finished it, I never even died once. Okay, maybe I did die a couple of times, but just dodge when they get too close and they're vulnerable enough from there. There is a stealth system in this game, headshots are one shot one kill, and you can stun lock enemies provided you have enough stamina to keep on attacking. To be honest, you're more likely to die falling off cliffs and setting yourself on fire. I hear something. Oh my no 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 Now we're nearing the halfway point of this video, so this is the part where I say subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done that, please click on that notification bell. It really helps me a lot with this channel and it helps me do more in the future. Thank you so much and let's get back to the video. I classified exploration into three different types, day, night, and cave. That last one being far more interesting. Daytime exploration is simple. You go about, you discover new locations, some of which will reward you with some pretty nifty stuff, materials, ammunition, and secret items if you also choose to find them. But cave exploration is what sets this game apart. They did an amazing job when it comes to darkness in this game. Darkness is black and they didn't just add some blue filter and called it night i'm looking at you skyrim install enhanced lights and effects mod if you want to fix that night times are as dark as they can ever be and you'll really feel much safer when the sun is up a standard daytime in the forest is about more or less 24 minutes with nighttime being more or less 12. be glad that it's less because nighttime is terrifying. Now, exploring with the light on might seem like a good idea. You can see further and be warmer, except for the fact that everyone else in the vicinity can see you from far away. Enemies included. Personally, I'd rather just crouch and crawl and hope for the best. Exploring the world of the forest is pretty much how it is in real life, if that forest is filled with cannibals and monsters trying to kill you. Same way with caves, make sure you have plenty of sticks and rocks as you go down exploring. You will need them to craft stick markers, which helps a lot in exploring caves, especially since it's really easy to get lost down there. What's nice is that you would actually be rewarded during your exploration and you'll find things you'd never expect. It's also how the story is told, oddly enough. I almost want to share things you can find just by playing the game, the stories you'll uncover, the things you'll learn, the things you didn't know you could do, but I don't want to spoil anything. So yeah. Ah, what the fuck was that? No? Oh no. Uh, uh okay, I'm nope. No 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 no. The forest is an amazing game filled with things to do, stuff to collect, and areas to explore. And as promised, here are all the tips and tricks I've learned, gathered, thought of, and found online. Enemies will always find you no matter how hidden and far away from sight you think your base is, except when it's surrounded by water. What I'm trying to say is that unless you're building on an island, always be ready to see some cannibal patrols. I've said this before and I've said it again. There's no such thing as the best base location. It does not exist. One of the best things you can build early on in the game would be a hunter shelter. It'll help you save, but more interestingly, it will attract birds for which you can hunt and eat. Enough to make the game a breeze to play through, at least in the first few days. You can play the game with up to 8 players. Now, 
that's not really a tip, it's just nice to know before setting up your game. Just know that if you do play the game with more players, the game will not make the world much more difficult unless you actually try to make it so. Again, the more active you are and the more enemies you kill, the more they will fight back and bring more and more reinforcements. There is actually a hotkey system in this game that would help you bind certain weapons and items to your keyboard, specifically 1, 2, 3, and 4. Choose above your WASD. You can do this the same way as crafting, by right-clicking on the item you want to bind and right-clicking on your backpack instead. Pick a number you want and that will bind that specific key to that item, allowing the instant swap or use of weapons and items. Oddly enough, there is no negative impact in eating cannibal meat, as long as you cook it first. Yes, it will lower down your sanity, but like I said, it never really affected my character in any way. At least, not negatively. It's actually not a good idea to eat something before you go to bed. Wait until you wake up because you'll always wake up starving. Always try to wash out blood from your body. Blood can actually cause infections that can make your character weaker and get tired easily. They're also very difficult to cure, so you might as well avoid it. You can only die once in this game. If you die, just reload and try again. I say this because if you play the game on multiplayer, you will instead be respawned at the plane. Don't mistake this as reloading as while you can get back all of your items from where you died, you technically started off with a new character, with all of your stats reset. Great if you want to cure sickness, not as great if you've already played a long time. Not all plants and fruits are edible. Be mindful of what you eat. That also works in real life. Rabbits can multiply by leaving one in a cage. You don't need to for some reason. I'm not sure why, but there you go. Building a bench can be a lifesaver as it helps replenish stamina lost when you're too busy cutting down trees. Your character is not limited by weight and is instead limited by item quantity. This means you really should take as many supplies as you can get. Crafting the warm suit as soon as possible can save the player so many headaches and so much trouble. It'll take a while to craft, but trust me, it's gonna be also worth it. You can burn cannibal meat by throwing the body on a campfire. This will burn the body until all that's left is bones, useful for bone armor and bone arrows. Or bone chandeliers. Birdhouses might seem like decoration at first, but they can also allow you to gather more feathers, allowing you to craft more arrows. More arrows, more ammunition. While certain traps might take long to build, they can actually be useful by thinning down hordes of cannibals, leaving the rest for you to kill. They don't break and they can also be reset just by one stick. Again, one of the most useful structures in the game. It's also fun to use. Make sure you don't walk through them though, as they can also be triggered by you as well as other animals. You can get burned by your own campfire. There's a good chance you already knew this by accident, or you can go ahead and try. It's just part of the game at this point. You can build a fish trap by using a normal trap underwater. I didn't know this before, now I do, and so do you. Oh, that rhymed again, wow. Tree houses are as strong as the tree you've built them on. Keep them away from mutants as they can go down fairly easily. Trees also break everything it falls down on, even your bases. You can cycle through walls to add doors and windows. Unless you're finished building it, it won't actually exist in the world. This means that while you can see that bridge looking like it's already been built, really, it's not, and you will fall down to your doom if you try to step over it. You can add sap to bombs to create sticky bombs. Sticky bombs are much more effective than ordinary ones as they, well, stick to enemies, making sure they get hit in the blast. One of the most useful and best weapon in the game is also one of the easiest one to build, and that would be the crafted bow. That's why I used that to highlight crafting, and that's also what I used to finish the whole game. It kinda explains why most of my footage revolve around me using that bow. Adding to that, upgrading your arrows to fire arrows works wonders because of the added damage over time it provides. It temporarily disables enemies, giving you time to work on other ones. Being an archer is fun, but all that fun is for naught if you can't hit your shots. Luckily, there is a target you can build in the game, and it's always nice to practice your shots on animals. Don't do that in real life. A good and single spear shot is enough to kill a deer. You can craft arrows by using one stick and five feathers. 
crafting one will give you 5 arrows in total. Interestingly enough, you can attach teeth and feathers to your weapons. It'll increase damage or speed depending on what you use. This game is a survival game, so use every advantage you have to survive. Avoid fighting with more than one enemy. Use tall ledges, use water, use fire. Heck, throw your teammates if you need to. Okay, maybe don't do that, but know that cannibals don't always attack on sight. And while they can't swim, they can, however, climb trees. So be on the lookout for surprise cannibal drops. The in-game map will always have all the cave entrances marked if you get close enough. It's not exactly accurate, but it is enough to help you explore the whole world. Skull lamps are amazing when it comes to marking areas in caves. Just make sure they don't get hit, because all it takes is one hit for it to get destroyed. Build a stone wall on top of your existing stone wall to make it taller. You want this because enemies can leap over stone walls if it's just one stack. Rocks respawn everywhere all the time, so no need to worry about those when deciding on where to build your base. Later on in the game, you will find cassette players as well as cassette tapes scattered around the world. Listening to one would actually help you with stamina regeneration. Know that they also attract attention from cannibals, so keep that in mind. They're mostly useful when cutting down trees. And lastly, have fun, or at least try to, because what's the point in playing if you're not having fun? The Forest might seem like a difficult game to play, but in reality, it's probably one of the easiest games to play or rather start your survival game binge or journey. It's the perfect challenge and I advise that you play it on normal, preferably with friends because this game can get creepy, but I'm sure you already knew that. It's a really nice day, in the and I think that's it. I don't need to add anything. I don't want to spoil anything. I just just needed to add whatever I needed to add. It's been a while since I made a video. Having a job does that, I guess. Well, I'm still here, still alive, and I'm still planning on making more videos. It's just, it's been a very, very interesting couple of days. Well, not days, months. What am I talking about? 